Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you love your maths teaching and make sure that all your children become fluent, confident and creative with their maths. This video is about teaching dividing fractions by whole numbers in year six. So there are four structures we can use to deeply understand division. Here they are. And in this case, the structure we're going to be using is sharing fairly. So some children prefer to count groups to understand their division. That's not going to work in this case. And you need to be clear about this. It's all about sharing fairly if they're going to get their head around this topic. I'm going to show you two structures for representing this today. Firstly, the circular representation of fraction and then a linear representation of fraction. So let's look at the circular way of doing it first. And you need some circles. I like to use my pizza parts from the pizza fraction fun. And so if we consider a calculation like one third divided by two, which is a typical calculation for this topic, we need to find our third. Here's a third of a pizza. And to divide this by two, we're using sharing fairly. So your children have to deeply understand that they are trying to share that third of a pizza fairly between two people and find out how much pizza each person gets. And a nice way to do that is just to give them all the pizza parts and ask them to find two parts that'll fit onto this exactly. And when they play around with this, they should eventually find that two one sixths fit perfectly. That's why I like this resource because the fits are always perfect. You can really tell what fits and what doesn't. And so the answer to one third divided by two is one sixth because each person gets one sixth. Let's consider a slightly harder question now. A harder question would be one where the numerator isn't one. Let's consider three quarters divided by six. Three quarters divided by six. So we need to build three quarters of a pizza. And we need to explore what happens when we try to divide that fairly between six people. And again, you can give your children the box of pizza parts, let them play, let them discuss in groups. And eventually you come to the conclusion that, well, that quarter will do two people, that one will do two people, that one will do two people. When you split a quarter in half, it becomes one eighth, two eighths make a quarter. So the answer to three quarters divided by six is one eighth. It's a great fun lesson. I'll just put on screen lots of questions that you can do with pizza parts. Children can explore these questions in groups and challenge each other. One child might be able to solve a problem another is stuck with and they can explain that to each other. And you can set up some powerful extension questions like, can you come up with any more divisions like this that you can demonstrate with the pizza parts? Can you see any patterns in the results? And can you invent stories that these calculations could be about? So that pushes them to translate the number sentence, the calculation, like three quarters divided by six equals one eighth beyond pizzas into another context. So this is a powerful and fun introduction to this topic, which will build children's understanding of the structures and will engage them and give them all confidence that they can do this. But it has some limitations. The first is that you won't have the pizza parts for every question. Second is you won't have the pizza parts in your exams. And it's also true that it's really good for children to see a mathematical idea through two different representations. Your circular representation is one. Now let's move on to a linear representation, which will more easily show the generality. So let's look at the same calculations again. The first one was a third divided by two, one third divided by two. Now, this time we're going to draw a bar that's one third of a unit long. It's easiest to start with a square and cut it into thirds. And we're looking at this part here. And those two parts are irrelevant. So this is our third. And we're going to cut it in half to find the answer. Now, we could cut it in half this way 
And if we cut the other thirds in half as well, we'd see that our answer when this is split fairly into two equal parts is one sixth. But I'm going to cut it horizontally because it just requires one line. And you can also see that this third, when it's split fairly into two parts, becomes one sixth. Therefore, the answer is one sixth. So this part here has come from the whole third. Now let's look at the second example we looked at with the pizzas, which was three quarters divided by six. So we'll set up a large three quarters. If we're dividing it by six, it's going to need to be quite large. Put it into halves and quarters. And then we'll show that we don't really want that bit. We're just focusing on the three quarters, which is here. And this shows why it's better to cut it horizontally into six equal shares, because if you're trying to cut it vertically, you've got to cut each part vertically. And you end up with a heck of a lot of lines. If we cut it horizontally, it's easier to do. Let's cut it into half. And then each of those halves goes into three parts. And when we share our three quarters fairly between six people, we can imagine the six people sitting here, each person is getting this much. So how big's that? Well, we can still imagine the rest of the whole. And the whole is in six times four is 24 parts. So that is three twenty-fourths. Now, when we did this with the pizza, we got one eighth from the pizza. And of course, they're the same. They're equivalent fractions. So you have got the right answer. But what this shows us, it gives us more insight into a general structure that we're looking for to answer all questions quickly. We like the sneaky shortcuts in maths. And the sneaky shortcut is that if you take this fraction, each part of the fraction shown by the denominator is going to be cut into this many parts. So that's going to lead to 24 parts in the answer. And the denominator of your answer can always come by multiplying those two numbers. And the numerator stays the same because each part in the original fraction is going to give you one part in the answer. So we can start to generalise to help us with harder questions. If we tried something like um, 6 sevenths divided by 11, well, you can imagine our original diagram will have six sevenths and each will be cut into 11 parts horizontally. So we start with this section here, which is six sevenths. But when we divide it by 11 people, we're going to end up just with one eleventh of that, which is going to be this bit here which has six parts in it. The numerator stays the same. And the number of parts in the whole, if we drew all the lines, would be 77. So that would be your answer. There's the generalisation. It's worth spending several lessons on this, letting children work towards that generalisation steadily. As they take this journey, they're deeply developing fundamental structures of fractions in their minds, which will connect this part of maths to all their other maths work on fractions and will consolidate it. When children see pictures in their minds, their learning increases over time, usually rather than all being forgotten the next day if they haven't got those pictures. It's worth clarifying what we haven't covered here. We haven't covered calculations like four divided by a half. We've been doing them the other way around. This is year seven, and just for context, you have to switch from sharing fairly, it's really hard to share fairly by half a person, to counting groups, how many of that in that. And when you ask how many halves in four, that becomes doable. But we can leave that to the secondary school teachers. It's not on your curriculum. We also haven't covered dividing fractions, two sevenths divided by a quarter. Again, that's something for secondary school. It takes a bit more work to develop the understanding of reciprocals and multiplication and division as scaling, so children are ready to understand that. 
and it's not on your curriculum again. But something that is on your curriculum is associating division with fractions. That is knowing that two divided by seven is two sevenths. And that's always true, whatever those numbers are. I'll create another video on that just after this one. So if you're particularly interested in that, it'll be here. But if you're not interested in that today, you don't have to watch it. Thank you for watching this video. I publish videos for the primary school teachers who want to deeply understand their maths teaching so that if their scheme of work that they're given isn't quite working for them, they can innovate around it and make sure they're meeting the needs of every child. And also the training I provide supports those teachers who want to write their own schemes of work directly from the curriculum. So if you, if you found this video useful and you think you might find videos like this useful in the future, please click on subscribe, click on the bell so you get notifications when I publish videos. I publish videos every Thursday. I'm working through the whole of the primary maths curriculum. This video isn't part of that series. It's just a quick response to a request from a teacher. So that just goes to prove that if you comment here on my YouTube channel or in my Facebook group, which is Expert Primary Maths Teacher Planning, I will do my best to answer your questions and respond to your needs. If you have any problems with teaching this topic after watching this video, please, please, please ask. I need that feedback and then I can help and improve this advice. I'd just like to leave you with a shout out to all our year six teachers. Year six is so tough for the curriculum content, for SATs and of course for the social dynamics of the girls. So thank you to all our heroes who take this challenge. Hope to see you all again soon. Bye for now.